Example number five is a really interesting example here because we're going to go back to this concept now of dealing with a difficult integral by attempting to split fractions, but kind of in a clever way. What I'll notice here is that if I was to separate my fractions immediately on this difficult integral into something that looks like the following, I would still be very, very stuck because what I see happening here in this first integral still does not actually resemble any derivative rule that I know, just like the original integral and the function in there didn't represent anything that I could find an antiderivative for. So what we're going to go ahead and do here is to show how, with a little bit of clever forethought, I can actually make this extremely simple to work with. So take a look here. I'm going to go ahead and note that since I'm only working here with a indefinite integral, I'm not finding an area under the curve, I don't need fundamental theorem of calculus, I don't need to show that this function's continuous, like we did in the last example. So I'm just going to jump right into the simplification. Here's going to be how I'm going to manipulate this. Hopefully you would agree that if I wanted to, if I wanted to, I could rewrite the value of 10 as a 1 added to a 9. There's nothing wrong with this, just a way that I'm choosing to rewrite things. And if I wanted to now, I could actually separate this fraction to a bunch of different fractions. Technically here, I could separate it into three fractions, or I could separate it into two. I'm going to separate it into two fractions by kind of grouping together in my mind this value of x squared and the positive 1. And so I'm going to separate this here into an x squared plus 1 over an x squared plus 1, and then I'll have a 9 over an x squared plus 1. Now, this might seem kind of strange, like why, why did I do this as opposed to just doing x squared over the x squared plus 1 and the 10 over it? Well, notice what we've now been able to create in this first fraction. This first fraction is the same top and bottom, and so when I simplify it, I can just rewrite it as the value of 1, and now plus 9 over x squared plus 1. And I know I can find the antiderivative now of each of these individual pieces. And the antiderivative of, of 1 is extremely simple. I know that's just going to turn into the value of x. But is this easy to work with? Well, I know I could kind of pull the 9 off to the side, but then I still have to deal with this 1 over x squared plus 1. Is that a derivative rule that we know? It is. It, sh it is the derivative here of the inverse tangent of x. And of course, since this is an uh, indefinite integral, I'm trying to find the most general antiderivative, and I should be sure to add a plus c. So splitting my fractions in a clever way, sometimes not just by separating things in the way that they currently look, but by kind of divvying up some of the different terms or the sizes of the terms up there, kind of like what we did here, can lead us to some easier simplifications that might allow us to spot some nice derivative rules.